Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and today we're working on my John Deere 755. We've got a few things going on with her. See there's something missing up here. We're gonna try to better route my cables from my Anderson connector for my winch over there. But the main thing we're gonna work on is under the hood. Right here on the injection pump where these three lines come out, we've got a fuel leak, and I'll show you. Don't even have to fire the tractor up. I know there's a lot of sensitive components down in here. When I was looking through the manual, there was a lot of do not this and do not that. And between all of the absolutely do nots, there's well, let me just show you. So between all of that, what we're trying to get to is this O-ring. And these little, I call them crush gaskets. But it's like a copper. And we're going to go ahead and replace them on each one of these. Now, this is the part where I tell you I've never done this before, but I'm fairly confident we can figure it out. I have the torque specs that we need and all of that information, and I went through the manual pretty extensively. Worst case scenario, we're gonna end up having to learn how to time a tractor, because all the timing for this little Yanmar engine is in that injection pump. If we're going to school either way today, it's just gonna be up to me how long we're in session. I'm also just noticing this, and I'm wondering if this is the problem I'm having with the starter solenoid. I'm gonna say it is. We'll probably have to fix that today too. First thing we're going to do is get some of this stuff out of the way. Get that up there. Then we'll go ahead and undo this fuel line. See if we can't get it tucked up somewhere. I just replaced this fuel line last summer, so hopefully we can get it off here without breaking it. But if we do, I've got more in the barn. So that'd be okay. There we go. And we'll just tuck that up there. Fellas thinking it might be easier to just go ahead and take these lines all the way off and get them out of the way before I force something and end up breaking it. Let's do that. Take this loose. Just four half inch bolts on the back of this. I'll get this filter housing or breather housing off and we'll go ahead and pull these lines out there it goes okay if I can just throw that out See where the injector lines go here? So we'll loosen these up. We'll just pull that whole thing out. Fantastic. There we go. See that spring just came out? So 
that's the o-ring we've got to replace that's the little spring that popped out at us definitely don't want to lose that Those O rings. Those O rings are in pretty bad shape. Oh, and the copper ring came out with this one. See it? Good deal. Using these real fancy, popular mechanics wrench. Taiwan, there you go. Come on. Oh. All right. Go ahead and put that O-ring on each one of these. They are OEM. There's your number. Yeah. These have seen better days. This is on the third one. I don't know how well you can see this. That one's just all, she's gone. All right, so I got the O-rings on all three of them. Next, we gotta get that little copper ring and spring set in there. And we'll just kinda hand tighten them down in the hole. I have been, I know you can't see over there, but I've got everything laid out in order that it came off of. I got all these laid out in the same order. I don't think it really matters, but Sometimes stuff does form its own memory, so we're just not going to risk it. We're going to put them in the same way they came out. And the best way to put the copper ring in is just drop it. And slide it center. Like that. Take the spring, because it's got to sit on that little dowel. Just kind of keep an eye on it as I slide it in. See it slid off. That's going to be the trickiest part here. Getting that to stay where it needs to be. I wonder if a fella could take a... There we go. And just kind of do that. The spec I found in the manual was 31 pounds, but if you're doing this on your tractor, you're going to want to double check that. I just go one click. I know some guys do like a second double check click, but I'm always paranoid that I'm gonna spin it a little bit further if I do that second double check click, so I always just do one. Not that that's right or wrong, I don't know. Just personal preference, I guess. You quit hitting your torque wrench on the frame.
Okay. So in the process of taking this all apart, this little vent tube here attached here, I ended up breaking that. It's kind of a hard plastic, but I'm just gonna take the heat gun real quick, heat this up, soften it up, and see if I can't get it pushed back on. That's what goes on there. I can't pull it off here. Next thing is to get all our fuel lines back on where they need to go. Minor mistake, I got ahead of myself. I gotta get the fuel lines in first. There we go. Okay. See I'm talking about it goes it goes under that line like that. And then comes in there. There it goes. That'll work. Get this fuel line hooked up. To fix the starter solenoid broken wiring harness, I just went with the old wire harness delete kit. I used heat shrink butt connectors and then put heat shrink over the heat shrink butt connectors. Double heat shrunk, super protected. I'm gonna go ahead and put this filter box back on before we suck too much nasty stuff down there. And I'm thinking we're going to have time. We'll go ahead and take the road drag out today and play around with it a little bit too. I did a full service on this tractor over the summer. I draw filters, air filters. Well, I draw filter, air filters, and oil filter, and fuel filter. All of them, all the filters. Oh yes, just lovely. So everything primed out fine, the lines bled out fine. The 755 has an electric fuel pump on it. The 855 and 955 have a mechanical fuel pump. I did have to crank the engine just a little bit to get everything to bleed out fine. I just snugged all three lines down on the engine side of the fuel lines obviously, then cracked one open, cranked the starter until fuel came out and then snugged that line down and worked my way down until I got all the air out. And it ran for about 30 seconds, a little rough, like it had a little air in the lines, and then smoothed out after that pretty well. You can hear that alternator belt squealing a little bit. I have a new belt to put on there, but I'm holding off because I want to get, well, one, I need to get a new battery, and two, I want to get a little bit bigger alternator, maybe the one they have on the 855, to put out just a few more amps to try to keep up with that winch whenever I'm using that winch. So I'm kind of holding off on changing that belt until I change the alternator out. That 
is awesome. Uh, I still had air in this line. I had to crack that one and bleed that one again. But once I got that one bled back out, or the air out of it, it sounds better. And listen to how, how fast she fires off now. Listen to how fast this goes. She used to not come off that fast. It used to take a little bit of cranking because obviously these would bleed down and there'd be air in these with that leak. But uh, that's dry. There's nothing leaking out of that. All this looks good. Everything looks good. I think that's fixed. I'm curious to see how much different it runs than what it did before. I knew it was doing it for a little bit and I, honestly I let it go too long. I'm curious to see how she runs. It's gotta have a little bit more power, maybe a little bit more responsiveness. You know, now that it's getting the fuel that it wanted. Okay, solenoid's fixed as well. Let's move on to the next thing. So if you guys have been with the channel for just a little bit, you know I've got this homemade log winch set up and I hook it up to the tractor using this Anderson connector. And on the tractor end of it, it comes out here, which I like where it comes out at, but I just kind of have it temporarily laying down along here. Well, we're gonna unhook it and we're gonna get it routed under the tractor and get all this paneling put back together. So, what we gotta do here. By the way, you're back to the GoPro mic. If you ever, oh, well that's engine oil. That's fine, it keeps the salt off of the bottom. Okay. We're back to the GoPro mic. If you ever wanna know how long a road wireless mic lasts, uh, about four hours. We gotta avoid all these linkages and we gotta be able to come down through here and then pop up right there is the goal, which should be doable. <laughs> nope, it's not going too far. All right, let's see if we've got enough on the daylight side of things. Can I reach up and around it? So initially I had my ground wire long enough to run down to where the battery ground's out. But after doing some research, it looks like it's better to run your ground for your winch directly to the battery. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut it down, put a new end on it, and hook it onto the battery. Now 50% of the people watching this channel will probably tell me that's where it needs to go. The other 50% will tell me it needs to go to where the battery grounds. And the other 50% are just really bad at math, I guess.
I don't have the right size end for this, so I just crimped it, folded it over on itself, and crimped it again. So, as you can see, the grill fell out of the front of the tractor, and I ran over it a few times. I was able to get it bent back pretty close to shape, but the biggest issue is the little spot welds that hold this on here have broken. I'm going to spend a little time getting these bent back to where they need to be, and I want to do this in Mike's shop so I could use his MIG welder. I think I have a better chance of getting these on uh, than I would with the stick welder, so we'll give it a try. Well, they are not the prettiest, but hopefully they'll hold the mesh on there, which is the main thing. Hopefully present Mike will uh, get this installed for you and you'll see what it looks like on the tractor. The time travel thing, it's a weird concept. I think we have everything done topside. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of self-tappers, but considering I ran that over with the tractor, it doesn't look terrible. And those self-tappers should keep it from coming out, saving us a few hundred dollars. I just ran down to the market to get some diesel fuel for the tractor so we can play around with the road drag, and somebody sent me, look at this. It's an oil filter wrench, see that? Locks onto the, the filter for you. And then this too, another oil filter wrench. I don't know who sent these. There was no letter or anything with it. So if it was you, thank you. They're going straight into the truck toolbox. And that way I have them next time I service equipment for Mike. So let's go ahead and take this over to the house and play around the driveway a little bit. This is the first time I've had this homemade road drag in actual stone. 
and I'm pretty happy with the way it's performing. The ripper teeth are getting through the material pretty decent. It's building up a little bit at the front there, but I don't think that's a bad thing. The whole goal of the ripper teeth is to break the material up, and then I can lengthen the top link out to level the plane out and drag it out and smooth it all out. So I think it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I mean, I'm happy with the way it's performing. It's, it's doing what I would expect it to do. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be the permanent fix for those potholes. The problem with those potholes is the fact that the ditch is higher than the road there. That'll be a long-term fix. But at least we can get it smoothed out for a little bit. And if you're ever doing the checklist in your head of whether or not you finished all your welds and welded in all your tacks, don't worry. You'll get reminded. Apparently, I never finished the weld on that handle, and it was just tack welded on. So she came right off. But that's okay. We'll get her cleaned up and welded on there the rest of the way. Not a big deal. And don't worry about that. That's just the 55 creep. That's just kind of part of the 55 series. They never stay still. I will say, though, without the handle, it is an absolute pain in the butt getting this thing to flip up. The handle is an absolute must for this little design that I came up with. So I'm going to finish plating around with this a little bit. I'm going to lengthen the top link so we can put some more pressure on the back now that we're done with the ripper teeth. And we'll see how it turns out. problem here where you get your potholes is when your ditch is higher than your road and that's something long term we're going to have to fix without a doubt but she's definitely smoother than what she was and not a lot of time put into it either as far as the tractor goes the hood stayed in she's nice and tight i'm glad we got that fixed well, we should have done that a long time ago like everybody said let's see if the pump is dry yeah she looks good She's got a little residual there, but that's from when we were working. Overall, she's drier than what she was, that's for sure. We got this all routed, so it's not down here on the floorboard. It's all clean, it all looks good. Everything looks good in here. New battery is definitely coming up soon on the list, but that all looks good. And I am gonna add a fuse in here, an inline fuse as well, especially since it's kind of tucked under here and we can't really keep an eye on it anymore. Put an inline fuse to avoid a fireworks show. And then I do plan on, you can see, they have a place to put bolts in this. I'm going to make a little bracket that sits right in here that we can bolt that to. And whenever we're using the winch, we can just bring it in, plug it right in there, we'll be good to go. And whenever it comes to jumping batteries, I think I'm going to make an Anderson connector cable that just hooks straight to the jump pack and then straight into this to jump the battery if we need to do that. Oh, come on. Got it. Thank you. 
I do love this rig. In case you missed it, uh, there are two videos of building this thing. If you want to check them out, I'll put a link in the description. It's been working great. That was a pretty brutal reminder that I had only tacked that handle on. So gonna have to fix that. Everything else seems to be working okay. I still need to add my chains to these, but I think it's working. As far as what's to come, what I'm working on the rest of the evening in the next several days, we've got some lumber for the goat barn and chicken coop. We've got some stone for the goat barn and chicken coop. And I'll, if, you, if you peep down there, you'll see there's some work done already on the goat barn and chicken coop. You get the trend, We're working on the goat barn and chicken coop. That's what I'm doing the next few days. So hopefully the next two videos will be that. And I'm pretty excited because we're ready to get that project going. I do apologize about the audio issues, by the way. It's very annoying, trust me. I get complaints about the audio all the time. Nobody's madder about it than I am. You spend 12 hours editing a video only for the audio to be less desirable than you would like it to. It's, it's frustrating for me, trust me. But we're trying to get it straightened out. I've got a long-term plan on how to make some better content or make the editing better and make the experience better for you guys. It just probably won't be until spring until I can get all that equipment to do so. But we're working on it. How simple as that? You know, awkward one-take outros. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.